Hi, I'm Nick Evans. I'm the resident director of the international tour of Mamma Mia! The Musical. And it's my great pleasure today to show you around uh, our stage and our backstage to give you a few of the secrets of, of what puts a, a hugely successful show like Mamma Mia! Uh, at the forefront of theatres everywhere in the world. So we're starting here on stage. Uh, this is what people see when they come to see the show, of course. And what you see behind me is the set. And of course, that is one of the most recognizable icons of Mamma Mia. The story is set on a Greek island in a taverna. And actually, this is where so much of the action takes place. We have a set that actually uh, is automated and can take us to different places in the story, to the beach, uh, to the taverna that Donna, who, who uh, is Sophie's mum, runs, uh, and, and also to, to the, the courtyard where all the characters meet for the first time. You'll know the story of Mamma Mia tells of Sophie, a young girl who is planning her dream wedding and her relationship with her mum, uh, Donna. Uh, but there's a bit of a complication to this wedding because she has three possible dads and we spend the story through the wonderful music of ABBA trying to find out exactly which one of the dads is her real dad. So it's a story that is exciting, it's a story that has some mystery and a story that has a lot of fun and energy and hopefully you'll get a feel for that. We have lots of different elements that we use uh, when we, we put the story together. Of course the first thing that is important to say is that it's a story that it tells that uh, the plot through the amazing music of ABBA and of course we can't do that without our wonderful band. So behind me we have the orchestra pit, we have our musical supervisor Carlton who sits there and who normally ties the show together. We also have lots of different elements. We have two guitarists, a bass, percussion, keyboards. And I think the real surprise that people have when they come to see Mamma Mia is just how they hear the music fresh for the first time. Carlton, who normally sits in that chair there, he's, he's actually a key part of that because he teaches the music in a way that, that astounds me every time I see him teach it. The music is great melodies, it's a great sort of storytelling music, but also more importantly, it's music that, that in being taught in a four-part ham harmony is fresh and new every time you hear it. In terms of on stage, there are a lot of things that the audience don't see, and this is the secret that you're going to find out for today. One of the things they don't notice are these little marks that you see on the stage. So you'll see little numbers that are placed. Uh, there's number 16, number 15, and people often ask when I show them around what that's about. I'll, I'll let you into the secret of that in just a moment. In terms of our lighting rig, uh, that is something that uh, manages to get the warmth of the island, and you can see at the moment they're just testing everything in preparation for the show so they're putting what we call uh, the mist through so that's to get make sure the lighting is is uh, got a really clear storytelling and also they're testing all the lights out ready in anticipation for the show they'll also be testing everything else ready for the show they'll be moving the set and they'll be making sure that everything is in working order so that the show tonight is exactly like it was on the first night that it was designed so I'm going to take you backstage so we can see some of the detail of what happens behind the scenes so we're here in the wing space, the stage left wing space now, and uh, it's quiet at the moment. You've just got a few of our very hard-working production team uh, managing to get everything sorted for the show. You can see John over there. Uh, he's one of our excellent sound team. He's checking microphones, making sure everything is going to sound perfect. Of course, it's a show about ABBA's music, so we don't want to leave anything to chance in terms of the sound. It's fairly quiet at the moment, though. When the show starts, this will be a hive of activity. We'll have actors dashing around ready to make their entrances. We'll have our fantastic stage management team um, getting everything ready in terms of the props and the readiness. And actually, people often ask, uh, is my job the most important one in the show, or is that the actors? I actually say that I think perhaps the most important job is our stage manager, because when the show begins, uh, no matter how much rehearsal or preparation operation I've done, um, it's actually the stage manager who runs the show. So let's go and have a little look at where she sits. So we're here uh, at the stage management uh, console. This, I say this is a little bit like being in the cockpit of, a, of an aeroplane. This is where everything is controlled from. So Kim, or one, one of the stage managers who sits here during the show, she'll be in control of everything. And she has a prompt copy, which she will have put together. And you can see it's here, ready for the show. And she has every cue placed in here. So she's got uh, lighting cues, automation cues, key sound cues, and she'll work with the heads of department of all of those different departments to make sure that everything is, is ready to go. She actually controls the show from here, so she'll put a headset on, and she's in communication with, with everyone while the show's happening. As you can see, this panel allows her not only to communicate with each department, but also you've got, she's got screens. Of course, whilst we want the show to be a great artistic success, it's important that safety comes first. And when we've got an automated set that moves, she needs to be in control of making sure that actors are in the right place, that no one's gonna get hurt or be in the wrong position. 
Uh, she also has a little camera here that uh, links to Carlton, who's our musical supervisor, and uh, conducts the shows. Because a lot of the key cues, a lot of the key lighting changes, the key set changes, happen on the first beat of a music. And of course she has to anticipate that. So as Carlton raises his hand, ready to bring the first note in, she'll see that on the camera, and then she's ready to give any given lighting cue at that moment. Just behind you, you can see our lighting team, uh, and they're actually preparing the show. Every light is checked individually. Um, there's weekly maintenance happens, but they also make sure that the moving lights, which is quite complicated equipment in some ways, that that's prepared and that's ready to go for the show. Uh, again, hopefully, if things go well, these are the things that an audience don't notice. They don't notice that huge amount of work that goes on with microphones, with sound channels, the huge amount of work that goes on with the smoke or with the lighting. They just get an experience that's a fantastic artistic experience. This is where the real work happens to make sure everything is ready to go. We talked earlier about sound and you can see this huge bank of equipment. We travel that with us when we go around the world because again it's equipment that we've come to know and trust and we know that serves the show well. So John is preparing the microphones individually for tonight. Every actor will have their own microphone and it'll be set with such precision because they have the microphone put through their wigs or sometimes behind their ear and, and John does a huge amount of work to make sure that, that that is exactly right. If a microphone is set too low or too high it can cause problems with the consistency of the sound. So what he's doing at the moment is, is checking the equipment. When the show starts, his job will be go, to go to each actor and make sure their microphone is set with the wig department in exactly the right place. And he actually ends up taking photos all the time that he puts on the dressing room mirrors to make sure that they're in exactly the right place. All of this equipment will then allow the control of the show. Although the show is mixed front of house in terms of sound, because it's so important to that we get it right, our sound team will also be monitoring the, the efficiency of equipment here. And again, in case something goes wrong, a little secret that we have is that some of our key characters, notably Donna, she actually has two microphones so that if one was to fail, she can actually switch to the other one and the show will carry on as normal. Always worrying about the event of eventualities of something going wrong so we don't have to stop the show. So I mentioned earlier uh, about how the detail is everything and again it's detail you hope that the audience never think about because they're thinking about the story but it is detailed. Do you remember I showed you those little numbers on the stage? Well here you see the chairs that we use and they're such an important part of the journey from the very beginning right through to the wedding and when you actually look at the detail of them I guess they look like chairs you'd go and buy in any department store. They're all individually made and they're made to have specific purposes so so some of the chairs are obviously meant to, to look attractive, the sort of the, the ones that have the, the raffia weaving. Some of them are actually strengthened because um, people stand on them at different points of the show. Uh, and some of them uh, are sort of just functional. But you'll see every single one of them has a little number on it here. So that when the boys crash onto stage for the wedding and they look like they're just putting chairs everywhere, actually every chair has a specific position. And again, it's that eye for detail really that's important. It means that there's nothing left to chance, everything's in position and that the characters who use those chairs for the next couple of scenes know they're going to get in the right place. What you'll see is that every actor's name is placed here so that Cade puts 1, 2 and 3, Ashley puts 14, 15 and 16 and so on and so forth. And one of the things I always like to talk to about uh, uh, about the process is, is the unsung heroes of our show. They're what's called the swings uh, and being a rugby fan myself, that's like that's like substitutes. The swings have to learn every single track. So at a moment's notice, uh, Craig or Jamie, who are our male swings, Lucy or Sarah, who are female swings, could be told, well, you're going on and you're going on for James, or you're going on and you're going on for Tom. And then they have to know all the details of the dance move, all the specific harmonies and all the positions that props and things go in that that actor would know. It's a hugely difficult job. And when you open your theatre programme, sometimes they're the very last names that you see. I know, as sort of a manager of the cast, that it's perhaps the most important job within the cast because their level of skill and preparation is so huge. So look out for them next time you go to the theatre. So now we're backstage in what we call Wardrobe Village, which is where the actors will be doing the show. This is where their costumes are set. Their first costumes will be set in their dressing room, but here you have the costumes that they'll change into during the show. So, so this is quite a busy area and every theatre is different. Sometimes you go to a theatre where there's a huge area and they're able to just hang out. You can see here it's quite narrow and so we have to be quite disciplined in this area. 
Just occasionally, this is where I have to be a school teacher and go, shh, keep the noise down. But very rarely with this cast, I have to say. So here you've got all the characters, and again, they'd be specific, so our wardrobe team would set everything. And you'll remember earlier I mentioned the swings. Again, you'll notice with the swings, they have to have a set of different shirts, because depending which character they go on for, they might have to have costumes that suit that character. So they'll have a set of costumes that suit every different character. One of the real uh, things that people comment on when they come to see Mamma Mia is the design element. It is the set, it is the wardrobe, and there's a huge amount of detail goes into that. I think one of the most obvious things is that you'll have noticed around the set, there's so much blue. You get that idea of the Greek island from the blues and the whites. But then later in the show, when we come to the party, the colors warm up and they come orange. So for a lot of the show, you'll have shirts that look uh, for the boys that look a little bit like this. So they work with those idea of water, they work with the idea of the blues. And then later on as the show goes on, uh, we, we get a different set of costumes that will go into purples. So it comes through the purples here. And then later on, when we come to the wedding, you've got these lovely, rich, warm colors. So every day I watch the show, I'm very grateful to the remarkable costume design and the huge work rate actually of our wardrobe department. When you tour a show like this, you're not only bringing costumes, you're bringing costumes for the first covers, for the second covers, sometimes for third covers in case of injury. And that means you have three or four sets of every single costume. I guess we tour around six or 700 costumes around the world, all of which have to be maintained, all of which have to be ironed and cleaned. Otherwise we'd have a very stinky cast. So we've come through now to, to another of the quick change areas, and this is the area where our dynamos, who are in a sense our lead actresses, the characters of Donna, of Tanya, of Rosie, who are some of the funniest characters, some of the warmest characters, and some of the characters that night after night the audience come away talking about. They're three friends who've met up for, for one of the, the dynamos, Donna's daughter's wedding, uh, and, and really they're the people who take us on the journey. Even though they're sort of the stars of the show, they have the same quick change area as everyone else. Uh, and you can see things have already been laid out for tonight's show. So you see they're kind of iconic Super Trooper boots, uh, which are very ABBA and very uh, Eurovision Song Contest. They're all ready to go, and they'll have to change into those quickly here. Uh, they also have their outfits that go with that. So here you can see Donna's, Sarah Poyser's uh, costume for tonight. Again, an enormous level of detail. Every one of these, uh, these pieces of star, these glitter, they have to be sewn on, they have to be uh, glued on so that there's a double safety to what happens. And the other thing is they're really, really heavy. I wouldn't like to dance in my shorts and t-shirt, never mind wearing that and having to do it in those boots. So next time you see uh, our dynamos going through Super Trooper, think that it's not just artistically brilliant, it's actually a bit like running a marathon to do it in this heavy suit and in those strange high heel boots. We tour actually everything because uh, whilst we come to some very, very um, uh, great shopping centres like Singapore, like Hong Kong, uh, some of the places we tour to don't have the same shops as we have in London. So we actually bring products from London for hair, for makeup uh, that, that are from London and we have to ship it all around the world to make sure we have the right things ready to go, even down to our Johnson's baby powder here that, that I think is used to keep the, the shoes fresh and to make sure they get into their shoes easily. So, so every product is brought with us and that's a huge preparation job as well. You can't leave things to chance of trying a washing powder or trying a hair product that suddenly damages the clothes or even worse, the hair of the actor. That must be what happened to me. Now we're at the wigs station. Uh, this is where the hair will be done during the show. Really the girls are the ones who have most of the work done to their hair. They sometimes have hair pieces that allows them to quickly transform into the Greek peasants or the girls who are at Sophie's head night. Um, but actually, usually they work with their own hair. So backstage you'll see a department that are constantly cutting hair, making sure things are ready to, to give an impression that is consistent throughout the show. So again, very busy during the show. Our, our wigs people, Rob and Izzy, will be working constantly to pin things to, to sort of uh, to brush things to make sure things are ready to go and again you can see we've brought our own things that we have to bring again of no use to me anymore but but this is this is a busy place during the show to, to make sure that that eye for detail is 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 ready and prepared for our props boxes that we tour around the world have got all the props that are used during the show, all the smaller props. And again, uh, it's all about detail, it's all about preparation. So you can see that each item is given its own place. That's so that when actors are coming on stage, they can quickly grab something and go. They don't have to be searching around uh, for where things are. And again, with every show, it'll be checked about an hour before 
checked at the half hour and checked during the show by our stage management team to make sure that everything's in the right place. There's nothing worse than going to see a show uh, and something isn't there. I guess my job sometimes is not to do that directly, but just to keep an eye that that's happening. And again, I think what's important with a show like this is eye for detail. So even though the, the audience see these letters from a long distance, you can see they all have Greek stamps on them and they all have individual addresses that are written for Sam Carmichael, for Bill Austin, and for Harry Bright. So you've got the detail of their addresses. No one ever sees it and the addresses are never read out, but it helps to create that feeling of being a world that is real. So over here on the stage right side of the stage, you have the other side of our technical operation. You have our automation desk, uh, which will control the positions of the set and the way it moves. So again, a huge amount of work goes into laying down track, into getting those trucks ready to move and making sure that they move to the right speed, uh, the right timing, and in a safe way. So, so Gary, who's our head of automation, will be sitting here and will be looking after that during the show to make sure everything's ready to go. Um, and again, he'll be working with, with his colleague Pradeep, who's on stage, and the two people will be liaising with our stage management team to make sure everything's ready to go. You'll see the screens again, which are about safety. And then behind you have the lighting uh, equipment. So every light will have an individual track, an individual maintenance that is prepared for and ready to go through the show. So you can imagine, both in terms of touring all of this equipment and in terms of making sure that it's working in the right way uh, so that audiences are never let down, that's a huge job. And we've got a very committed team who are constantly working. Once again, they're the unsung heroes. Hopefully we never think about them. We think about our stars and our dynamos and Sophie and Sky. Uh, but these are the people who are sort of constantly paddling away to make sure that the detail is in place. We're at stage now where the final preparations are being done uh, before the cast arrive, ready for their warm-up later on. You can hear they're testing the sound system uh, right on cue. Uh, and hopefully in a few moments, everything will be ready. The technical team will come to me and say, we're ready to go. And I can start to think about the cast in preparation for the show. Before the show happens, we'll actually move everything on stage and there'll be a vocal and a physical warm-up, which makes sure that they're ready to go, that the voice... The voice takes huge uh, amounts of work during this show and physically the choreography is very demanding. So, so one of the jobs our team, our choreographer, our musical supervisor and me will do was check that everyone is ready to go and also that's an opportunity to give notes, to re-rehearse some things and make sure that the show is as excellent tonight as it was on the very first occasion. So I hope you've enjoyed our tour. We, we ended up here on the Taverna. Hopefully we'll see you out in that audience uh, ready to join the party because the other thing about this show is whilst all of this stuff is very important, you'll also find that it's a show where the audience counts. We really hope if you come along, you'll end up singing and dancing and, and joining the ABBA fun. We hope to see you there.